Hey, welcome back to Random American, and today I'm going to show you the easiest, down and dirty, simplest way that I can think of to wire in your LS into your truck and onto the engine and transmission. So, if you're interested in that, go ahead and grab your favorite snack, sit down, and we'll get this figured out. So first things first, most important thing, this is made by Big Timber, which is here in West Virginia, and pretty good beer. But in all seriousness, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, this is spaghetti soup, and it's not nearly as bad as you think. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and get your harness, get it all I'm dropping stuff all over the place. We're gonna get this all laid out. And you're gonna get it where you want it. Alright, it still has a starter on it. I need to buy another starter because uh the guy that I bought this harness off of, uh this oh, this starter he wanted to keep, but I broke the stud off on it. So don't let me forget to do that. There's a lot of this. That you don't have to have all right and there's a lot of different ways that you can go about cutting this harness down so if this is coming out of a donor truck that is the easiest way to do it you'll just have all this stuff unplugged uh, you'll have two ends of this plug and two ends of this plug that will come in a little bit later and well obviously you'll have two ends of this plug because this is for your uh Oh, this is for your throttle. Okay, so that confused me for a second. This harness is for the 2004 to 2007s that have an electronic throttle. This one we won't be using because this is going to be for a 5.3 for a Buddy's El Camino. I probably won't show that on here unless you guys want me to. Because on there, we'll be doing the quick down and dirty way to do it. It won't be this long drawn out process. Should get it done in three days. Uh, so if you want to see that, the quickest, simplest, easiest down and dirty way you can possibly do it, then that's what we'll be doing. Uh, but anyway, with this, this is just the main harness. Uh, you won't really be using anything off of this or anything off of this you can just cut them clean off uh, this one i used for my auxiliary stuff that comes off of this ecm and that would be your uh, uh, check engine light your data for your obd2 which i highly 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 recommend you hook up uh, your cruise control speed sensor, if you want to use that, I have it for later on down the road, and your tack. All of those are their own individual little pin on here. Uh, right here, I'll post a link to lt1swap.com, and I'll also go ahead and put up the screenshots right here of your pinout guide. Everything in yellow, you completely get rid of. You don't use it all. And the easiest way that I have found to do that is you'll get your engine, you'll get all this, and you'll just hook this up to your engine. Uh, hook it up to your engine with your alternator on it. Uh, just anything you're going to need on the engine uh, for it to run, which I think really the only things that aren't on the engine itself is your alternator and your mass airflow. Other than that, just everything that's on the engine, basic. You'll just hook all this up, so you'll have all, these are all your, Injector plugs. This is your uh, uh, throttle body control. This is your uh, spark plug or your coil plug, and it'll just hook into your coil rail and a ground. Don't forget this, it will not run without it. But just get this stuff hooked up super easy. Get this plug and this plug, cut them clean off, silicone the ends. 
silicone the end of each individual wire so nothing grounds out, nothing touches anything. Tape them up. Get this. Cut it off. Don't don't worry about this at all. I I would do that to this, but this harness and ECM has to go back. You'll get all of your pink wires and put them together. And I'll show right here where I have them hooked up on, on my truck. You'll get them all hooked together and you'll have a coil wire coming off of your main harness. You will hook every single pink wire into your coil wire. Then you have two little orange wires in here. Those go to directly to battery positive. These get power all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and splice this little section in here while we're talking about this. Up here, you will also have your uh, uh, fuel pump uh, signal wire, and it's a gray wire that runs up here that runs from your ECM. Uh, I also have it in my plug set up, and you will run this to a uh, relay. Always run it to a relay. Don't run it to the pump. You'll burn. You'll burn stuff up. But run this to a relay back to your fuel pump. And all this is a little signal wire. It'll engage your relay. It'll uh, purge the way it's supposed to. If you get into a rollover, God forbid, or any sort of really hard wreck, uh, it'll shut your fuel pump off. It it'll work the way it should. Now you don't have to. You don't absolutely positively have to. It's just a good idea to. You can run power to your pump. You can run key on power if you want. I don't recommend it. I do sketchy stuff, but for me, that's a little little extra far. So, yeah, fuel pump. I'm pretty sure it's this gray one right here that uh, runs the signal for that because it's the only gray wire up here. And you will want to run an extra power for your OBD2 because your OBD2 you'll only have four wires on it. You'll have your data wire, you'll have a hot wire, and you'll have two ground wires. Both of those ground wires can go to the exact same ground. Doesn't matter if it's body or if it's battery, they can go to the same ground, not a big deal. Uh, in here, you'll have your tack and all of that. Uh, whenever you have that connected, where this plug came in, to came in handy for me is, my extra wires like my tack and all that that is connected into here i just ran them from this to the ecm itself and i have that separate so i can plug and unplug this at will <clears throat> if you don't have that that's perfectly fine you can continue to use the wires that are up here and you just trace them from your ecm to here splice them in and move them where you want them uh, every wire that you're not using either take out of your ECM itself or find some way to insulate it independently so you don't have just an open ground or whatever just floating out, out there. Not an open ground, but an open positive. And you don't want uh, data wires from your ECM grounded out. I don't know what it'll do. I'm not a math magician, but it probably wouldn't be good. Moving on from there, you will go back to your... Oh, let me get this organized. We have your starter being hooked up. There is absolutely nothing crazy or special about your starter compared to your factory starter. You'll have your main cable hooking in right here on the same spot as it would for a lot of uh, uh, factory starters. And then you have your uh, ignition or enable wire that will hook on right there if it didn't have a broke off stud and that's it that wire comes over to here you can just whenever you cut all this off you'll take your uh, start solenoid wire hook it into the same factory one that works the exact same uh let's see let's move on to transmission stuff okay so moving down the transmission side of your wiring you'll have a o2 sensor plug right here uh, and then you'll have a couple extra plugs that you don't do a damn thing with then you have a where'd it go oh okay that's right 
So on a 4L60, I don't believe you have an input and an output speed sensor. On a 4L80, you have a input and output sensor. Oh, you have an input and an output, output speed sensor. And I use the Walters Engineering uh, speed sensor adapter setup from, uh, from them. And that's for two, NP208. So we're talking about a K10, stuff like that, for, for this at least. So let's pretend that this is your output speed sensor. This is your main, tells your vehicle or your ECM how fast you're going. Uh, you'll install their kit, which is super simple. I did a video on that. Go ahead and check it out if you don't mind. Um, but on that, it's easier than hell. You just cut this off, you strip it back a little bit, and you just solder the two wires on there. It does not matter which two you hook it to because all it is, because all it is is a pulse coming through there. So it's going to read a pulse no matter what. There's no no special tricks to it like I thought there might have been. Obviously, your transmission uh, main plug. This is another O2 sensor plug. Chop that off. Don't need it. Your ECM doesn't care anyway. Next up will be your oil pressure sensor. You don't need it. Not on this. Uh, if you're going to say you're going to run a factory, say you're going to run your, your own gauge cluster, your factory gauge cluster, I don't know what you would do about your speedometer. That's something I haven't done, so I couldn't honestly tell you. But you just cut this off. You don't need that. You can go on Amazon and get a factory uh, square body adapter that goes to your uh, oil pressure port there at the back of your block. And you just screw a factory one on right there and plug in your factory one like it never went away. Reads perfectly fine. And a lot of guys say that it works really well. Uh, the next one is the same thing with your coolant. Uh, but with your coolant, you have to have your coolant sensor in the side of your head on the front driver's side. You have to have your coolant temp right there because your ECM does need to know how hot it is because it changes the tune accordingly. And there's the same plug on the opposite side back towards the firewall on the head. Same thing there. They make adapters that you just screw in your factory, small block, big block, whatever, uh, coolant temp sensor, and everybody says it works just fine. Uh, my coolant temp and my oil temp or oil pressure are all mechanical. Right now, I'm, I'm using the old stuff, so I think I kind of screwed up my coolant temp and it's not working quite right. I also have a coolant leak that I'm going to have to fix uh, one of my gaskets. Uh, I must have pinched it or whatever on my water pump, so I have to go back in there and do that. Uh, as far as your uh, factory volts, you can hook that into any keyed on, uh, any, any keyed on power, because it's just, all it does is it just sends voltage up there and it tells it what it is. Uh, your, fuel send, your fuel sending unit, you, if you use the sending unit out of an 87, uh, that is the exact same, it's a 0 to 90 ohm system that'll hook in just like factory you'll never know a difference and obviously you have to use your i think it's a 97 95 97 i'll put it up here uh what i got uh fuel pump because that will run 97 psi and obviously you have to have your fuel regulator but that's all separate stuff uh other than that that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, you'll have an AC plug and whatnot that you can get rid of. Uh, and here's your other O2 sensor. That That's the one you don't need. It's the downstream side. You only need the upstream. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a lot to it. The biggest thing is if you get power to your pink and orange wires here and you get power to your fuel pump, and you delete or have somebody delete the VATS, the vehicle anti-theft system off of this, it'll fire up. There's no questions about it, it just will.
Okay, uh, before I get to the last tip that I have and we close out the video, uh, I would like to uh, thank the guy that recommended this video. He was all turned around and backwards on what he needed to do. He was probably looking at this spaghetti soup and going, man, this is a lot of crap. And he's right. And he just wanted a little bit of clarification on how this stuff connects. Uh, so if you're watching, buddy. I appreciate you. And you are the example of if you have questions and it's more than I can just type out in a comment, then by God, I'll put a video out on it and hopefully I can clear it up. <laughs> but my last tip is monotonous. Uh, whenever you, so the best thing you can do is have a donor truck. If you can have a donor truck, that is preferable. And if you do, the best thing you can possibly do is label everything. And I'm not saying you need to go through and be like, this is a ground wire. Okay, we know you know that. But like your injectors. So if you're not super familiar with how these go in and what order, it's a lot easier to get a marker and write right here, uh, two, four, six, and eight, or whichever side this is, or one, three, five, seven. Uh, your coil plug, left and right, simple stuff like that. Uh, your O2 sensors, uh, left and right, or bank one, bank two, because if not, then you have to go through here and lt1swap.com will tell you what uh, color your injectors and all that are supposed to be, but it's a lot easier to go and say, okay, well, this one's number one because it's labeled number one, instead of going, okay, red wire, black stripe is this one. Uh, black wire with a white stripe is this one and orange wire with a black stripe is this one and where I'm pulling that from just another side note to the side note to the side note every one of these will have a pink wire going to them that's your power the other side is your signal and that's what uh, initiates the pulse which is basically just grounding it and letting it open the injector and one side will have a pink wire this one looks orange whatever uh, the other side has your off-colored wire, and that's how you're going to tell all of them. Normally, the off-colored wire is on the side that doesn't have the little push clip on it. Easier way to identify it. Uh, yeah, that's that's really all I have for you. And again, just go over real quick. Cut off these couple of plugs, and silicone them, tape them, do whatever. Now, if you want, you can absolutely take all the loom off of this and take these wires out how they're supposed to be. Works just fine. But my next one, I'm just going to cut these off and use the plugs, use this plug at least the way that I was planning to, which will entail taking this apart, but it is much easier whenever you're just going after a few wires, because lt1swap.com will tell you exactly what wires they are. And all you'd have to do is uh, depin, or actually you wouldn't even really have to depin them. You just come up here so far and cut that wire far enough where you can get a splice on it and splice it into this plug and you're, you're golden, you're good to go and then just keep track of them from there then you label them with tape and all that but no it's it's really that easy you just cut that off hook up your pinks and oranges get everything else hooked up and oh fire now like i said you will have to have a tune your anti theft system has to be taken off but that's it uh, i hope this helped if there is anything at all that you guys need to know let me know either if I don't know it, I probably know somebody that does. Uh, I'll go ahead and put up uh, some screenshots of some groups that I'm a part of that have helped me out so much. It is ridiculous. And they are really, really good people, generally a giant wealth of knowledge. Um, but yep, I will see you guys next time. And I hope you have a wonderful day.